Dispersion forces are generally the weakest of the interparticle forces and the only forces between atoms and nonpolar molecules. While dispersion forces are also present in polar molecules, there are even stronger forces present. Let's discuss dipole-dipole and hydrogen bonding interactions here. Consider acetone. The tetrahedral shape and symmetry cause the area around the carbon and hydrogen to be nonpolar. But acetone has a very polar carbonyl group. This is the carbon-oxygen double bond. The oxygen is more electronegative than the other atoms, thus pulls electron charge density. This creates a permanent dipole in acetone. If another acetone molecule with its own permanent dipole is near, then a dipole-dipole interaction will occur. Now, let's consider a different special type of dipole interaction. Hydrogen bonding occurs when a hydrogen atom is bonded to a highly electronegative atom like oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. Water, ammonia, and hydrogen fluoride are classic examples. Let's use water as an example. Water is interesting because it contains two OH bonds, both with a large dipole moment. These dipoles, like vectors, sum to give a net dipole moment for the molecule, and water is a polar molecule. More importantly, if other water molecules are nearby, then strong hydrogen bonding interactions can occur. Now for a special note for organic chemistry students. Oftentimes, organic molecules contain both a polar carbonyl group and a nonpolar carbon chain, or a polar OH bond and a nonpolar carbon chain. The carbonyl group can form dipole-dipole interactions, while the OH group can form hydrogen bonds. And the nonpolar carbon chain can interact through London dispersion forces due to temporary dipoles. So, which forces dominate? The general rule is when nonpolar carbon chains have five or fewer carbon atoms, the dipole-dipole or hydrogen bonding interactions will dominate. And when nonpolar carbon chains have six or more carbon atoms, like the example shown here, the London dispersion forces will dominate. 